Do you like samurai swords? Do you like knives? Do you like pistols? Do you like running everywhere at super speed? Then this is going to be the early game build for you. What is up guys? It's Jimbo here and welcome back to another Cyberpunk video. Today we're going over my early game melee build that I've been working on. I wanted to make an early version of this because some people may not have a chance to get all the way to end game and they may not know what the best path is to go when it comes to leveling up. So I wanted to do that here. The build is super awesome and fun to play. You can go around slicing everybody up and just throwing knives into people's heads is awesome as well. And I'm going to go through some places to be able to get the weapons that you can use in this build. And then also some gameplay tips after I've shown it off. So let's jump in. So let's jump into the character screen and go through my attribute distribution to begin with. I have 15 points currently at level 22. Uh, in reflexes and I also have 15 points in call. I will then focus on a little bit more technical ability and also body as well but the reason why we're going to reflexes is for blades and the reason why we're going into call is because we want to get the throwing knives. Technical ability is going to be great for extra cyberware if you want to go down that route but you can also go into body and get yourself the adrenaline rush uh, um, perk parts of the tree which will definitely help you with a bit more survivability later on in the game which is probably what i'm gonna head down with as i go a little bit further on and then maybe i'll get some extra cyberware i'll probably put this up to like eight or something like that and have 20 20 20 but it's entirely uh, what you would like to do a little bit more of so let's go first over i have one point in body and that is because i'm going to get myself painkiller with the perk point that i can get you can get this as soon as you can uh, and it's basically unlocks slow health regen during combat this is very good when you actually go through the uh the starting portion you will have a couple of extra points to allocate so i would put them uh two points into reflexes and i believe you can also put two points into um call as well and then i think you have one point left over that you can maybe put into technical ability but let's go through the reflexes tree because i'm trying to get up to legend and i will do eventually uh, and the main skills that you're going to want to pick up first and foremost before you get all of the extra stuff First of all, you want to get yourself slippery to start out the tree. This allows us to um, move and make us more difficult for enemies to shoot us because it, infects, uh, it increases our dash, uh, dashing, which is very good. We also unlock um, a ability with dash as well, which is very, very good that we can use. Uh, and this is going to be vital for keeping ourselves alive. And also we get a minus 20% stamina cost, which is very good. And then eventually you can go and make your way up to air dash, uh, and then you can be able to dash in mid-air. What I would recommend is, though, that you start into Slippery, get a dash all the way up, then move into Lead and Steel, purely because you get the ability to block projectiles that are coming towards you, which is very, very good. And then I would immediately get yourself Bullet Deflect, because then you will have enough points uh, eventually to be able to go into the Finisher, which is the Blade Runner aspect. Basically, the stamina cost for using Blades goes down as you go further through this tree and we eventually get ourselves blade finisher when we put three points into this uh, and there we have uh, 25 percent health refunded whenever we are um, using a finisher eventually we'll make ourselves up into slaughterhouse and it says bleeding um uh, bleeding cannot kill enemies but does make them more susceptible to finishers and then plus 25 stamina from a dismemberment so if you can get something with dismemberments on it then you're going to be in a very good situation. And then also on top of that, uh, all attacks, counterattacks, and deflected bullets apply bleeding and also a dismemberment chance. But that's what we'll be going to eventually. But uh, so I would eventually start out. Well, I would start out by going uh, into these two trees here and getting these maxed, and then going into the call tree and getting yourself feline footwork. This gives us movement speed while we're crouched. And also mitigation chance, which is going to be very good. And then you also want to get yourself killer instinct. This is, allows us to do uh, more damage with knives and silenced guns. Uh, and this is really easy because it's only one point. Then you go into scorpion sting, which allows you to uh, apply poison eventually with knives that you throw. And then eventually we're going to get ourselves juggler, which is uh, it's an instant cooldown reset um, for all throwable weapons after neutralizing an enemy with a throwable weapon via headshot, crit hit, or poison. And with the amount of damage that you can do, it means that you're just throwing out knives for days, which is fantastic. So that's what I've got in these trees. 
in the technical ability i haven't put any points into that yet with perk points uh, and also in body i've just got the point in painkiller so you want to take a screenshot of this right now and then also have a screenshot of that and then also uh, take a screenshot of that eventually we will go into nujitsu which is going to help us with stealthing and then I will probably go down the pure melee route and I'll just have whatever side weapon I want, whether that's a shotgun, SMG or anything, so I can get this specific um, uh, element here, which is going to allow us to be a lot more survivable whenever we are uh, in combat because we want to go with melee only. Or I'll go down the technical route. I'll make that decision a little bit later on in the game. But for cyberware, this is where I'm at. This build is purely melee, so we're not going to be going into any specific cyberware stuff, um, i.e. like uh, quick hacks and that type of thing. So we are not net running. So the best thing to have here is the Sam Devers stand. There are better ones that I currently have uh, in the game, uh, and I'm going to go and get probably the Militech one eventually. This is very good. Uh, having the uh, Kiroshi Ops is also quite good as well. You'll get that basically for like whenever you start. Now, you can go with Lynx Paws on your cyberware here but uh, you can also go with reinforced tendons as well which is quite good um, i think that's the one that gives you double jump and then i have heal on kill is amazing for this because it allows you to keep yourself survivable as long as you're killing a bunch of enemies and then i also have blood pump in here which is essentially essentially removes your uh healing item and this is just an instant use one uh, and you don't have the animation it just instantly does it on you uh, and it's a part of your body which is very good we have armor here which is the uh subdermal uh, uh subdermal armor and then also the the dense marrow uh the skeleton is obviously going to be helpful for when you do melee damage i haven't done too much with my cyberware at the moment because i'm locked at 72 so i'll probably increase these at some point but with the arms you can also go down the mantis blades route as well so yeah if you want to use mantis blades instead of a katana then you can do now speaking of a katana and i'll tell you how to get them in just a moment i am using the satori i've leveled it up to level three when you use this quick hack uh, or quick attack i should say when you come out of uh, its sheathed position i can hold uh, the attack button and basically it will inflict bleeding damage and if the enemy is already afflicted with bleeding the sadori will cause hemorrhaging and it will allow you to drain an enemy health and also regenerate yours so with nihan when you direct impact something you can make them um, start to hemorrhage it heals you and then you can get the additional burst of uh, healing from the satori which is very very good then i have skippy as my other weapon but you can get other stuff uh, there is the uh, Dying Knight, which you can also get. Um, and then there's also the uh, Kongao, which I will also tell you how to get uh, later on in the video to kind of get you started off. Uh, but stay tuned for some more weapon videos in the near future. And then ultimately, I just have a really cool looking setup for my character when it comes to uh, wielding the Katana. So let's talk about how you can actually get the weapons for this build and the gameplay tips for it. You can get three weapons for this build really early in the game if you take part in the heist quest, which is right through the main story. This is where you're going to get a biochip with Jackie. And when you go to the Koneki Plaza for the main mission in the penthouse room, after all of the cutscenes and stuff have happened, there is a pistol on the bed in the room that you can go and grab. This super awesome iconic pistol is the Kongao, and you can actually use this to go onto the roof to shoot the two guards. And this is going to allow you to go and get yourself the Satori and also some dog tads as well. And the awesome thing is the Satori is the Katana. So you can have these in two different slots. And if you head back down the stairs, if you go over to Sabura Arasaka's body, you can pick up the Nihan, which is a knife that is a throwable. And the way that this works in tandem with the build is that you can throw a knife at an enemy, which will allow them to become bleeding. And then you can pull out the uh, Satori and get the effect as well and lunge towards them and take advantage of that bleed effect as well. But on the whole, anything really works with this build when it comes to melee with blades specifically. So you can find katanas. You could use this with a machete. You could also use mantis blades if you wanted to. So it's down to you and your personal playstyle. So there's the build. So let's go over some gameplay tips with this. You need to get into the habit of picking targets and dodging quite consistently. You will be in melee combat. You might die a little bit more frequently with this build because 
you don't have your armor up straight away which is like i need to do then you will find yourself a little bit overwhelmed but if you can chain kills together with the sandevastan and also with uh, the knee hand throws as well then going into the katana you're going to have a really great combo as well to be able to keep regenerating your health as you play the other neat feature is having the finisher as well which also helps because it means that you can get yourself like 25% health back whenever you slice up a bunch of enemies. And then eventually, as you progress through the build, you'll get more attack speed and you'll get even stronger. So there is my Blades Katana Cyber Ninja build, the early game variant of it. I'll be doing an updated version of this when I get towards the uh, end game cap, so level 50. And I'll try and do some other builds when I get there as well, because if I'm trying to swap around builds, I have to be very careful because of the uh, one-time respec that you get. So I'll do that at a later date. But if you've enjoyed this video and it's been informative, leave a like on it, subscribe down below, and turn on the notification bell. Leave a comment on what your favorite build is in Cyberpunk at this present moment in time. And as always, this has been It's Jimbo, and I'll see you guys next time.